Peace be with you. Since two weekends, weekends ago, when we began to uh, proclaim the gospel uh, over the next few weekends, uh, we began this gospel of St. John chapter 6, the bread discourse, and we've been going through a homily series on the Eucharist. So this will be the third weekend we'll be going through this uh, beautiful uh, topic of the Eucharist, the source and summit of Christian life. Um, just to set up uh, kind of um, the backdrop of the homily today, today's homily is going to be on the effects of the fruits of the Eucharist. What happens when we receive the Lord? I just want to just go over the readings with you a little bit because it's uh, all uh, speaks of uh, the effects, and the fruits of um, the symbols of the bread of life that comes from uh, first reading from the first book of King, when Elijah, prophet Elijah, who was doing such a good, beautiful work for God, and he slaughtered all these um, hundreds of uh, false prophets, and then he was running away. He was running away from everybody, and he gets to a wilderness, and here he is, famished, nothing to eat, and um, God sends him bread and water, bread and wine. And uh, this is what God speaks as, as he's encouraging Elijah to eat this food. He says, get up and eat. Otherwise, the journey will be too long for you. So Elijah got up and ate and drank. Then he went in went in the strength of that food 40 days and 40 nights to Horeb, the mountain of God. So there's always foreshadowing of how God is going to feed his people to strengthen them. And today's a second reading, St. Paul to the Ephesians. St. Paul reminds us that when we live in Christ, which means when Jesus, the grace of God, lives in us, that we become a living fragrance, pleasing to God. There's something takes place, something that gives away when we actually live in Jesus. And today, too, in the gospel, right, our Lord says, this is the bread. He's talking to himself. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. Whoever eats of the bread will live forever. So with those uh, backdrops of the, of the reading scriptures today, I want to uh, speak to you. Um, whatever reason, I know it's hot, it's just, we just got rain and whatnot, humid, you fall asleep, that's fine. I hope that you will give your little effort to stay up a little bit, okay, during my homily. But if you miss it, they're all from the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Catechism of the Catholic Church on the Eucharist, and especially the part where it speaks of the fruits of Holy Communion. So, what happens when we receive the Holy Eucharist? The principal effect of when we receive the Lord is that we receive sanctifying grace. What is sanctifying grace? It's a big word. Sanctifying grace is not like a, some kind of energy that works in us. It is the life of Jesus that is living in us. Remember as St. Paul speaks in the Galatians, to the Galatians, he said, it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. It is the Lord who begins to live in me. Friends, if we are not in the sanctifying grace, and sometimes you hear these expressions, being in the state of grace, it means, is Jesus in you? Is Jesus in you? If we're not in the state of grace, then there is no life in us. There's no life in us because there's no God. It doesn't matter how good we, we, we might be 
if Christ, the life of God, is not in us, then there is no life. Because no one can come to the Father except through Jesus. And that's what also he says, right? In the very uh, chapter, it's not today, but it's going to be next weekend, where he says, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood, abide in me and, ab- and I in them. And whoever, who, whoever does not drink my flesh, uh, eat my flesh and drink my blood, there is no life in you. So first thing is that God begins to live in us, powerfully, powerfully living in us. It's that intimate union with Jesus that changes us. See, when we have a sanctifying grace, when we're in the state of grace, when Jesus is living in us, it transforms us. It transfigures us. We have um, celebrated just a couple days ago. Was it yesterday? Yeah, August 6th, the Feast of Transfiguration. That feast is our feast. Why? Because he has shown us whoever is in him will become like him that we will live in glory one day. It changes us. State of grace changes us, not in degrees, but in kind. Not in like a degrees, you know, I mean, it's just a little bit changed. No, no, no. Once you are in the state of grace, you become a supernatural sons and daughters of our Heavenly Father. So that's the principal effect. And the second thing, When we receive Holy Communion, the Eucharist preserves, increases, and renews the life of grace, the life of God in us, just like the food does to the body. You know how we, when we eat food, material food, it strengthens our lost, um, you know, Stamina, right? Our, our tiredness is restored and refreshes us. Same thing takes place when we receive the Lord. Not only it preserves us in our integrity, but it increases and strengthens us. So this is why so many saints have said, don't just receive communion a few times a year. Don't just receive communion just on Sundays. Do your best to go for daily communion. Whenever time allows, go to Mass where you will receive the eternal nourishment, the eternal medicine for your soul. As bodily nourishment restores lost strength, so the Eucharist strengthens our heart of charity. Okay, so that's the second point. Third fruit, third fruit of the Eucharist, receiving communion, is that Holy Communion preserves us from future mortal sin. Future mortal sin. See, the more, we sh- the more we shared our Lord in the Eucharist, the more difficult it becomes for us to break away from him. You know how when you love somebody, right, it becomes harder to um, break the trust, right? Same thing takes place with our Lord. The often we receive communion, the stronger the bond becomes, and it prevents us from the future mortal sin. So important for us to know. And then the fourth fruit of the receiving the Eucharist is that the Eucharist strengthens the unity of the mystical body of Christ. What is the mystical body of Christ? Us who are all in communion with the Lord. Do you want to love your spouse more? Do you want to forgive somebody? Do you want to have a greater sense of patience and understanding? You want to perhaps reduce your anger? 
and maybe detach yourself from the resentment that you may have, be healed from the past wounds and sins. The church says, the more we receive the Lord in the in Holy Communion, the Holy Communion, our Lord, helps us to remove all these areas so that we may become strongly connected with one another, that we are truly be able to love with the proper and genuine love. Because who is living in us? Jesus. And who is Jesus? He is love. Not only he loves, he is love. He's the source and summit of our ability to love. This is why the Holy Communion strengthens us with one another in this mystical body of Christ. And also, mystical body of Christ includes all those who are in heaven already, the saints, Mother Mary, St. Peter, St. Joseph, and all the saints that we know, the ones we know, the church has canonized, has recognized them as saints, and the ones who are not even known to us, and yet they are in full communion with the Lord, and their friendship becomes much more stronger in our life. Friends help friends, right? So when we receive Holy Communion, you know, sometimes we do need spiritual divine intervention. This is why when we go back to our seat, right, we don't just, you know, uh, uh, sit there. We don't just wait until everybody receives communion. We spend time to savor the friendship and call upon the friends in Christ so that they come to our aid. Did you know, did you know you could pray to your loved ones who even have passed away when you receive communion. Why? Because that person, that person could be might as well in the union with Jesus. And when you receive the Lord, that person is with you, with you. Can you even imagine if that person that you, that you know who have passed away is in heaven, how powerfully that person will be coming to your aid. So don't waste this mystical body that we are receiving. It's the fruit of receiving communion. The last thing is this, friends. Receiving communion is a pledge of our eternal life. The fact that we are able to receive Holy Communion guarantees us that you and I will be in heaven. Given that you are properly disposed, let no one receive the Holy of Holies, the Eucharist, when, when that person is not in the state of grace. We'll talk about this in a couple of weeks when we talk about the Eucharist and penance, that we can't just come to receive the Lord when we are in total separation from the Lord. We call that in the state of mortal sin. Instead of death, that's what it means. Receiving Holy Communion guarantees us that we are at peace, that we are not going to be lost at all. So it's God's promise that we could have hope in Him as we approach Him. So friends, you know, especially for those of us who might be afraid of death, right? Um, hopefully that you will look at the Eucharist in a different way, friends. You know, uh, we had a funeral this morning too, but at every funeral there's a prayer that we always say, and the priest says these words, for the faithful departed, the life is changed, not ended. Not ended. Because it is the Lord who has died for us to destroy our death and he's reason now to show you and me that what our life is going to be with them. So let's be glad and rejoice in the fact that God has given us this pledge, this promise of eternal life whenever we receive communion. So dear friends, as our Lord said today, he said, I am the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. 
let's continue to receive our Lord with a greater, greater appreciation, greater gratitude, so that we could continue to be transfigured until the full communion when we see our Lord face to face.